Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here to share with you all of the microphones that I use in my studio, Frightbox Recording. Now, over time, I've had more and more people ask what exact microphones that I'm using to record metal bands on a daily basis, and I figured I'd make this video to show you all the microphones that I use. Now, as you'll soon find out, some of these microphones are super duper cheap. As a matter of fact, I've had some of them for 15 years. Some of them were part of my original microphone collection that I bought when I first got into recording. So if you're a gear nut or a gearhead, I apologize. Okay, and just to show you how simple my collection is, in this corner of my studio, I have some retro games going, Super Nintendo controller, Sega Genesis controller, some VHS tapes, all on my mic stands. And in this shelf, middle row, first cube on the left, are all of my microphones. So let's take a look and see what I got. So the first mic in my collection that I always use when I'm recording drums is a large dynamic mic, and it is the Samson Q-Kick. And much like I was saying before, a lot of the mics that I use were from my original microphone collection that I bought when I first got into recording, and I've had this guy for 15 years. I've had it since 2005. Now, I primarily use this on kick drums, but it also sounds great on bass cabs. Now, when I record out of other studios, sometimes I'll use the Shure Beta 52 or the Audex D6, and to be honest, this thing sounds very close to one of those. I could use any three of these microphones, and uh, that's why I've never upgraded, and I still use this one on many records to this day. And up next, I got six Shure SM57s. Now, what's great about SM57s is that they're extremely versatile. They're my go-to mic for guitar cabs, snare top and bottom, and even toms. Now, I'm sure some of you out there might be wondering why I don't use 421s on toms, and I do when I'm at other studios, but to be honest, the 57 does the job just fine for me. For me, the microphone placement is way more important than the actual mic itself. And I've had these six Shure SM57s for 14 years, so they're also very durable. Now, one thing I use SM57s for that's somewhat unusual is actually room mics. I found that if I keep them close to the ground and point it away from the drum kit, they add a nice warm ambience to the rest of the drum sound, and they also help exaggerate my drum room, which is nothing fancy or big. So if you have any extra Shure SM57s lying around, try them as room mics. You'll be surprised at how decent they actually get the job done for metal. So next in the collection is a Shure SM58, the classic vocal mic for live recordings. I have one of these kicking around if I ever have a vocalist that really wants to get up close and hold the mic as if they were at a show, as if they were performing live. And to be honest, I mainly use it for live recording, but every once in a while, I'll use it for a studio track as well. And as you probably already know, a Shure SM57 and 58 are very close in frequency response, but again, I like to have this kicking around just as an extra vocal mic. Now this mic I've had for a very long time. It's a Shure PG58. It's the cheaper version of the Shure SM58. I used to use this for recording demos out of my house way back before I even got into recording, and it still works just fine. I use it for live recordings from time to time. The cool thing about this mic is that it has an on-off switch, so if during live performances, if I ever want to kill one of the mics, I can just flip the switch. Okay, next in the collection is I have four SM81s, Shure SM81s. Now these are small diaphragm condenser mics that sound great on so many different sources, I can't even begin to name them all. But I'll tell you what I use them for. I use them for drum overheads, also for cymbal spot mics. Sometimes I use them for room mics. I'll use them for acoustic guitars, gang vocals. They're just an all around workhorse, great small diaphragm condenser mic. To me, they're the Shure SM57s of condenser mics. And also, these things have gone through hell and back, and they're built like tanks. Now, they're not the cheapest mics in the world, but they're a great investment, again, because they'll last forever, and they just sound great on so many different sources. Okay, next in the collection are a pair of Samson CO2 small diaphragm condenser mics. Now, much like the kick drum mic, this was part of my very first microphone collection that I bought for my drum mics way back in 2005, and they're still kicking. Now, you can get a pair of these for around $100, and I'm going to be honest, they sound very close to the SM81s. To be honest with you, I really can't even tell the difference in a mix. I'm sure there's a subtle, subtle, subtle difference. These days, I use these more for room mics in my room, just to have an extra pair of ambience mics on the drums, but uh, to get the job done. So again, the Samson CO2 pencil condenser mics, they've stood the test of time. I've had them for 15 years, and they're still going strong. And at $100 for a pair of these, can't go wrong. Okay, next is a Samson Q-Tom. Again, this mic was part of my original drum mic pack that I bought way back when I started recording, and uh, it's still going. Now, at home, I have three more of these. The only thing with these is that the clips ended up breaking, so I ended up having to get third-party clips, which unfortunately never clamp onto the rims properly on the drum kit. So I have this guy at the studio just in case I ever need an extra mic to mic under the snare, or if I need an extra ambience mic or whatever. They're just great all-around workhorse microphones. So I have this here at the studio, again, just as an extra mic. And also, I want to mention that they sound very similar to an SM57 
on the toms and snare. And you can still get these mics, the Q-Kick, the Q-Toms, and the pencil condenser mics, all within a drum mic pack that Samson still makes to this day. At this time, they're around $300, but uh, I would say they're definitely worth the investment if you don't have drum mics. And we're almost at the end. This leads me to my favorite microphone by far for vocals in the studio, the Shure SM7B. Now I know some engineers obsess over vocal mics and trying out five different vocal mics on different singers. I'm gonna be honest with you. I use this mic on every single singer. I don't care what genre, if it's clean vocals or screaming that come into my studio. And I've never had a singer that did not sound good with this mic. Again, not the cheapest mic in the world. I think they go for close to $400 now, but definitely worth the investment. My only complaint with this mic is that the output is very low. So you might need something like the cloud lifter to help boost gain before your preamp. But outside of that, I would say it's an all around perfect vocal mic. The other cool thing is that because it's a dynamic mic and it's very directional, it really helps remove the sound of your room if you're recording in a space that's less than ideal. And also, if you ever buy one of these and you decide to sell them down the road, they have great resale value. So again, an all around classic vocal mic. Now, I don't only use this mic for vocals. I also use it as a hi-hat mic. And just recently, I've been experimenting and using it as an extra room mic. And again, much like the 57, it actually sounds pretty good as a room mic. Now for me, when it comes to room mics, I'm really looking for mid-range, a nice warm mid-range. That's why dynamic mics really work well for me. So if you're recording hard hitting rock or metal, try a dynamic mic as your room mic. You might be surprised with just how good it sounds on your drum recordings. Now I know it's more common to use condenser mics for your drum room mics, but when you're working within a small room and you really wanna remove that cymbal sound from your drum sound, using dynamic mics actually works very well because it helps produce a warmer tone that'll blend nicely in with the rest of your kit. So there you have it. Those are all of the microphones that I use in my studio. Now I've recorded countless records, singles, EPs with just these microphones. And a lot of the time before a few years ago, even less microphones than I just showed you. And as you just saw, a lot of these microphones are low end cheapo mics, nothing special. In my opinion, the mic placement and the source is infinitely more important than the actual microphones you're using themselves. Remember, don't ever let gear hold you back. These days, you really don't need anything expensive or fancy in order to produce great recordings out of your home studio. And my studio is nothing more than a glorified home studio or project studio, and it's never held me back. So I'd love to know, what are some of your favorite or go-to microphones? Leave a comment in the comment section below and tell me about your microphone collection. I would love to hear about it, especially your go-to mics for guitar cabs, drums, vocals, all the fun stuff. Let me know. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And be sure to download my five-step guide to better heavy mixes so you can achieve better results with the gear you have right now. I will leave a link to the free guide right below in this video's description. Till next time, happy recording.